y'all. Give me a minute, man. We gotta get started. I got two to get. Yeah, I talked to him yesterday too. Yeah, that's uh, on the tent for indigenous people um, today. Yeah, I'll be in Vegas. Yeah, October 10th. Me and a couple people, I, I got a, a little conference. So we'll be uh, Double Tree Hotel. Yeah. I used to go there every year, but my people work there. So I, they let me stay there and I'm going to have it at the conference room. And then we'll be downtown, you know, demonstrating. And then we go to the museum. Okay. Peace, 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 everybody. On this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Monday morning. Just hitting my messages. Get everything set up for October the 10th. We got a good uh, Moors meeting in Vegas. A couple of my nobles are going to meet up out there for Indigenous Peoples Day. Give some literature out, meet some brothers, drop some fizzes off, teach the science the right way. But uh, we're going to do a little introduction today. Signs and symbols of the primordial man. Because I know a lot of my nobles don't read. They all caught up in being paper terrorists. Don't understand that we are Moorish Americans. And what make us Moorish Americans? Because we're born in America with Moroccan descent. These brothers ain't no damn foreign nationals. They don't have no allegiance with nowhere else. They ain't never left the damn neighborhood. Talk about some foreign national. I'm a Moorish American. Proud to be a Moorish American. Proud to be. Don't never want to expatriate from no goofy ass de facto government. I'm right here. When you expatriate, then what you are, where you going? Where you want to go? This is the only place you can have nothing and make something. This is the only place where you can have religious freedoms. I'll be telling Moors, they never left their neighborhoods or their communities. Talking about some back to Africa shit, but don't own nothing in their communities. And if you feel you gotta leave the, the states for your peace, so be it. I don't, cause I'm home. I'm home, man. I'm proud to be an American. Proud to be an American. What type of American? Moorish American. I just told you, I ain't worried about what nobody else uh, proclaim. I tell you exactly what I am. Proclaim, declare, have due process. I tell you who I am for the record. You don't have to assume. You don't have to. You don't have to think. All you gotta do is ask. I tell you. For the record, no way you can be an adapt. No way you can be a sheep. Sheep. No way you can be a magi if you don't understand the signs and symbols of the primordial man. If you think masonry, some Europeans, you crazy. You don't lost all your marbles and, and understanding. And you don't understand math. You can't. Not if you diss masonry. I see all these goofy brothers making videos talking about, oh, the Freemasons. You don't know nothing. That's spookism. That's some TV shit. And y'all know it. Well, you probably don't know because most people are not initiated. I'm telling you right now from the horse's mouth. That shit they talk about, Freemasonry, that's spookism. 
That's trash. None of that shit ain't happening. Zero. None of them people never been in no temples. And the only one speaking of that shit is Europeans and Negroes that took an oath to embarrass themselves. And then they want to speak out about the shit that they done, but it's too late. I respect that. Everything was in reverse. This is our science. And the European agree with me. Every European potate, I don't care if they Scottish, right, whatever, that's real. They agree with me and they sons of Muslims. My professors, I'm in Arizona, they were potates. They agree with me. I'm 99 degrees, ancient right of Memphis and Mizraim. I don't have to hide nothing. Nothing secret with me. This is sacred. If you don't know what this company square consists of, you don't know what this Gnosticism mean, this Genesis mean, then say that. But don't let nobody get you caught up in no dumb spookism and try to diss masonry. You can't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no way. You don't know how to use the compass and the square? No way. To say that the circle and the square are not the same, to say the, the misnomer swastika is some evil, all spookism. To say the Baphomet is some evil and don't understand Kabbalistically spelling. We are the shrine. 32, 33 degrees is just a level above freezing. That's snowman wisdom. That's in meteorology when water freezes. I'm telling you facts. So let's deal with the introduction of signs and symbols of the primordial man. You can get this from mypdfbooks.com. That's books with the Z. And all books on our company page is PDF. The reason why we love PDFs is because you can download it to your tablet and take it everywhere with you. You don't have to go around with a whole bunch of books. And then if you lose your book, say if you have the book, which is a PDF, you can print and bind it. You print and bind the book in book form so you can always have it. So say if you lose your book or you let somebody borrow it, you can print it again. It's an NFT. And that's why we make the books a fraction of the price on Amazon. I tell people, our own people be trying to scam. I'm in a red state, which is Arizona. I do business every single day in my sleep, all internationally with college students all over. They love getting books for me. They like, you the new Jeff Bezos. They like, why do I want to get a hard copy book from a certain place that I might lose it? And I got to buy it again. And you have the book PDF. I can download it on my tablet and print it and then and then distribute it to my friends for a better price. I mean, for the same price so we can get the knowledge. And then you are people. That's why you can get this from us PDF and, and download it on your tablet. Go to Office Mac and Staples and print it. It's 2.30 on Amazon. It's the whole book. That's what I tell us. We ain't, we're not in the technology. We still old school. We always want, oh, I want the book. It's 2.30. If you want to go buy from Amazon, so be it. But if you lose your book, you're going to go buy it again. Signs and symbols of the primordial man. Let's deal with it. The evolution of religious doctrine from eschatology of ancient Egyptians. Albert Church Ward, introduction by John Henry Clark. The republication of this book, the signs, the symbols of the primordial man, at this time is more than appropriate. Dr. Albert Church Ward was best known, British disciple of Gerald Massey. Y'all know who Gerald Massey is, right? If you don't, you can get all Gerald Massey books from me. He got six volumes, The Ancient Egyptians, The Light of the World, two volumes, A Book of the Beginnings, two volumes, and Natural Genesis, two volumes. Great studies, great reads to have for your library. I tell everybody, man, when you're dealing with a teacher, a scientist, and adapt, I can build your library 
for the fraction of the price, you'll go to Amazon. And a lot of the books that I have, you can't get on Amazon. And it set in motion a new and radical approach to the history of African civilization and the African contribution to the social thought that went into making of the world's three major religious religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In more science, we call that the triple rose of the adapt chamber, the Fatimid, the Periclete, the so-called Christian Jerusalem rite. You gotta know this. So how can the Moor call himself some adapt, this, any, anything? And then I say, well, do you know what the unto the eye grant is? No, no, I don't know. I say, man, stop. Then you can't have a conversation. Then you don't know monotheism. Then you don't know about the Osiris mysteries. When they talk about uh, Atlantis of the latter days with the Europeans try to hide, it ain't nothing but our science, which is the Osiris mysteries. You got to be initiated. This I'm telling you. And why wouldn't you want to be initiated with truth? They try to put stuff in the books. We are the shrine, the walking book of Eli. And then we manifest it in real life. It is difficult to assess the value of Dr. Church World's great contribution to history without referring to his master teacher, Gerald Massey. Massey did not begin his career searching for Africa's place in the world. He was an uh, uh, agnostic whose intention was to prove that the basis of European civilization was created outside of Europe by people that some Europeans later characterized, characterized, excuse me, character, characterized as savages without a history or culture. You know they try to say the Negro or beast without no culture. His search led him to Egypt where he found proof that Western culture was in fact African in origin. The larger portion of it coming mainly from the Nile Valley. His disciple Albert Churchward continued his important work and in his book takes his search into another dimension. Men like Massey and Albert Churchward were battling against a wall of European misinformation about the contribution of non-European people toward the civilization of the world. And only a few radical European scholars were able to understand the full impact of Churchward's work. At that time, this book was written. That's why I tell people, in academia and scholarship, I don't care, forget that Negrocentric propaganda, that Eurocentric propaganda. Man, you can't discredit the first century writers. And they tell on themselves. That's why scholarship, when I tell people, I don't care how much you like it, it's no Willie Lynch letter. I don't care how many rappers that you like wrote about some Willie Lynch letter, it's not one. Never was one, it's propaganda. Black was never used to describe ethnicity in the first century. Never within black laws, none of that shit. That was only to describe in theater, like the black screen per se. There was no such thing as no Willie Lynch. No first century writer wrote about that. Frederick Douglass, nobody in the first century wrote about no damn Willie Lynch. Never. Roots wasn't even real. Roots was fake. I tell y'all, I got the book. It's a book by uh, Harold Colander. Uh, uh, it's a book called The African. And that's where uh, 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 Alex Haley play, plagiarized Roots. And then the European Harold Colander, all that stuff fake to try to get you caught up in that black slavery crap. And it's just what it is. We got to go back and deal with our true teachers, man. I don't deal with biased teachings. I deal with science. What is the essential message of Albert Church word today in an era of scholarship? New and bold challenges to old concepts about history of the world and the contribution 
of African people toward the origin and development of the world's civilization and culture. See, I know Moors don't study. Moors always say they're what they want to be a part of, but we always supposed to be a part of something that's real. We always supposed to be initiated. That's the science we under. Albert Churchward begins his work with an examination of Freemasonry, its ritual, signs, symbols, and their contribution of social uh, thought. What he is saying, in essence, is that Freemasonry was a part of the Nile Valley. By extension, he also saying that higher learning, which was carefully guarded at early times in history, gave birth to secret societies. That's why I'm telling y'all, in the Zulu, one of my elders, peace be among him, Credo Matua, as I tell people, when you're an educator, when you can do math, reading, arithmetic, and you can teach the children and teach the adults, you are the teacher. You are the Magi in that tribe. And if you're a medicine man and you're good with finances, you are the Magi. Come on, man. In these secret societies, there existed the educational approach that will lead to the establishment of the world's first universities. The first universities were Timbuktu, Salamanca. Research this stuff, man. I don't know why we get to act like we are ignorant people. Because if, if, if misnomer white is smart, then what is acting black? Stupid and illiterate? You know? What he is saying, in fact, it is the origin of the university, comes out of the Nile civilization. African people develop signs and symbols as a way of communication and delivering messages. That's why when these brothers talk about they can read the hieroglyphics, not if you don't understand the alphabet, you just making that up. It's most unfortunate that most people who today are members of secret societies have no in-depth knowledge of the history of the society and the unifying role they play in the early intellectual life of the Nile Valley. So why are we gonna let people sit up here and get you all caught up, act like masonry is some spooky? And I'm telling you it ain't. I'm sitting right here, your brother, telling you it's not. What do you think, what do you think we do? I'm a Moorish master craftsman. I'm, that's just making me a student. What do you think, how do you think this sign is some uh, crazy ass Illuminati? And I show you that we are the enlightened one. The only people that's in trouble is those that turn on their back. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be afraid of. If through church words examination of the most of the known cultures of the people of his day, that the signs and symbols of the primordial man is revealed. And at this juncture, we need to be reminded that the Nile Valley stretches over 4,000 miles into the body of Africa. And that the creation of the Nile Valley civilization cannot be attributed only to that portion of North Africa that the Greeks call Egypt, the Nile Valley River, was the world's first great culture highway, bringing people and cultures out of the body of inner Africa. This great cultural migration led to the people of Egypt, making Egypt a composite civilization comprised of different African people who dwelled along the banks of the Nile River. The civilization that developed in Egypt was the uh, culmination of civilization in Africa. None of the components that went into the making of what we now call Egypt came from Europe or Western Asia, commonly called the Middle East. And at this point in history, we cannot discuss Europe because there was no Europe in the name. And as a political entity in the world, Europe did not exist. There was no mention of Europe in early ancient history because at that time, Europe was very busy trying to extract herself from the impact of the last of the ice ages when people be telling you the dark ages when we rule. Man, we ain't never with no dark ages. 
I know medieval times. That's Negro centric propaganda. People be misquoting stuff because they don't understand stuff like that TikTok stuff be worse. I told y'all, people be thinking stuff hidden. Like I've been telling y'all a long time ago, the book by Vladimir Ivanhoff uh, is called Russian Icons. They didn't hide nothing in the Russian icons. That's why I tell people all this stuff, if you adapt, if you're a scientist, the, it's going to be in books. We talk about this is when we rule. No, listen, man, not, that's what that is. That's what it is. That's the figures. We talk about whitewashing the history. It's just what it is. And in connection with this book, there is also a need to examine the works of the greatest American disciple, though, Gerald Massey. All these other uh, first century writers that I have the books and you should research. Alvin Boy Khan. Khan is best known for his book, Who is the King of Glory? It's a great piece of science, which is a, a great piece of early Christianity. Shadow of the Third Century deals with the uh, Conference of Nicaea and its aftermath especially the opinion of an African theologian known in history as St. Augustine and referring to no European participation in the conference of Nicaea, St. Augustine said, in effect, these people are trying to revamp and give back to us a concept we have for over 3000 years. St. Augustine in identifying the early African origins of the concept that the Europeans will later call Christianity is indicating that this, that this concept existed among the African people without the dogma and the formalization before the birth of Europe and the introduction to who is king of glory, Alvin Boyd Khan has this to say. Let me get me some smoothie, hold on. The pick that struck the Rosetta Stone in the loamy soil of the Nile Delta in 1796 also struck a mighty blow at historical Christianity for it released the voice of a long voiceless past to refute nearly every one of Christianity's historical claims with a withering negative. The cryptic literature of old Egypt sealed in silence when Christianity took its rise, but haunting it like a specter after the third century now stalks forth like a living ghost out of the tomb to point its long finger of accusation at a faith that has too long thriving on falsity for that literature now rises out of oblivion to proclaim the true source of every doctrine of Christianity and Egyptian, the product and heritage of a remote past. The books of old Egyptian now unroll the sagas of wisdom, which announce the inexorable truth that not a single doctrine, right, tenet, or usage in Christianity was a new contribution to the world religion, but that every article and practice of that faith was a disfigured copy of ancient Egyptian systemism. He extends his message in the following manner. The entire Christian Bible, creation legend, descent into an exodus of Egypt, art and flood allegory, Israelite history, Hebrew prophecy and poetry, Gospels, epistles, and revelation, imagery, all are now proven to have been the transmission of ancient Egypt scrolls and papyri into the hands of later generations, which knew neither their true origin nor their uh, uh, fathomless meanings. The sheer fact that even amid the murks of ignorance and superstition, the mere ghost, shell, husk, and shadow of Egypt's wisdom inspired religious piety to extremes of faith and zealotry, a singular attestation of his original power and majesty from the scrolls of papyri, 5,000 to 10,000 year old, there comes stalking forth to view the whole story of an Egyptian Jesus raising from the dead an Egyptian Lazarus at the Egyptian Bethany with two Egyptian Maoris present, the non historical excuse me, the non-historical prototype of the incident related only in John's gospel. In a collective way, family, Gerald Massey, the master 
and his disciples, Albert Churchward and Alvin Boyd Kahn, have revealed the early African origins of the three major Western religions. All of those concepts were developed before the Bible was written and before the figure in history known as Jesus Christ was born. Alvin Boyd Kahn's book, The Lost Christianity, also needs to be read as an extension of the views expressed in the above quotes. The works Dr. Yosef Ben Jocklin, John G. Jackson, and other modern scholars have reconsidered this information and prepared it for the use and understanding of students and teachers for our time. I refer you to Dr. Jokinan's book, that's what they call Dr. Ben, The African Origins of the Major Western Religions, and John G. Jackson's Man, God, and Civilization. In conclusion, as they say in the legal profession, I rest my case. And I don't want to read all the way into the science. This is a good piece of science. And I tell people, man, you can't be afraid of the science. Only people make you afraid of things is people that's not initiated. No God is afraid of no one dressed up like a devil. You face that head on. You feel me? We should feel good, man. Ain't nothing scary about this science. Nothing. We are the shrine. We are the shrine. So when we refer to Freemasonry, man, more often than not, it's directing the thought to the so-called Western Freemasonry, which a lot of brothers are connotated. How can I say? We get caught up in these misnomers, Prince Hall and all these mystic things, not really getting the true understanding. So we're going to touch a little bit of this. It's a vast difference between Western Freemasonry, what people call Freemasonry, than what we call the old time masonry or the old time mastery, AKA masonry. Now, keeping your hippo compass is all different forms of masonry. You may be a type of mason that works with your hand in that context. You might be a brick mason if you have a particular science, a particular craft that come from the great God within, you are a mason in that context. So in this context, stay with me. True masonry as originally developed by God men of Africa was designed as a ladder which climbed from the finite to the infinite from that infinite heart of the fallen humanity back to the heart of his creator. That's why I tell you to get off your knees. When I talk about the Al Salat, the Al Salat is not on your knees. I don't have no problem with my religious brothers doing five Salats. That's on you. But you damn sure can't show me in your Quran. I don't care which one you get. And I can show you the ayah where it say that's for the slave. You don't got to believe nothing. I say the Absalot was done a certain way and at a certain time. And these holy instructions became a 24-7 way of life for masterminds. Carnal men later reduced this spiritual unfoldment to what we call a religious service. And in true masonry, there are a series of tools used to create a building not made by hands the temple of the perfected man. And with no disrespect, when the Europeans pillaged the universities, the temples and lodges of ancient Egypt, they stole and killed for everything they could see. And I'm telling you, you know I ain't saying no bias. I tell y'all the European agreed with everything I'm saying. I go all the way down the line. Just like the infinite wisdom, just like the infinite wisdom, the second Moorish Akashic record is the annotated source text for chapters 20 to 44 of the Circle 7 Quran, the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America, this text served as a guide for immigrants to the urban cities of the North 
who have lost knowledge of their heritage, language, and customs. It was compiled by the transplanted religious nationalist prophet Nobujar Ali, who taught the former slaves were originally Moorish and had their nationality, language, and identity stripped from them during the era of slavery. Nobujar Ali in North Carolina and I had encountered Islam and Oriental Masonry during his travels in the East, ETC. But I'm just saying, man, we can trace things. It's no secret, but it is sacred. If you want to learn, it's only one way to learn, to be a student. Stop just being a spectator. And then they tried to call them the pathway Solomon's temples. Then I can show you what's under Solomon's temple if you really want to know. Later, the stolen tools, symbols, and rituals were used to build the Roman uh, Catholic, the York, and the Scottish Rite orders, and used against them and used against the African victims. And these Western orders now beehive into the so called Illuminati. But it ain't nothing to be afraid of because we are the enlightened ones. That aha moment when you rise above. That caveman wisdom. We ain't with that. They take all the signs and symbols. They take the crescent moon, the scimitar. They even the fez. But Freemasonry is used in this science, referring to the crime as Western Freemasonry. Please stay in context. When I tell all my brothers, I know who Freemasons. You signed the oath. And, it is, and I tell my brothers, we can rise above this. That's why the world is confused of who we are. Because our brothers who have done things in clandestine. I go around the European masonries. I know European potates. They'll tell you that they're a son of a Muslim. They'll tell you if you initiate like myself and others. They'll tell you that they're not the joker masonry. They'll tell you that our own kind is the joker masonry. I'm telling you big facts. And to most devout masons, as you will understand later, Freemasonry, a God made of certain European men whom they self-serve religiously. Freemasonry as one of the most powerful gods of Europe is the source from which, no disrespect, European males, uh, Albion, Trelodite, whatever you want to call it, that's how they drew the strength to give themselves the title of white. There's no disrespect. And today, Morris, white is accepted as normal and often understood as proper when Europeans are being addressed. However, family, in the ministries of our Prophet Noble Jir Ali and myself, its propaganda is brought to surface in the science. What does the title that Satan give himself to try to confuse him and try to trick you of the name? If the teachers say praise the holy name, you don't know the name, that's the whole thing. How you don't know the name? Why? And a prophet and an angel come from amongst your people. You see your one and ones? What's a prophet? What's an angel? Clothed in the flesh? And the, and the understand this fraternal order, nearly all Negro, Blacks, and colored people call Europeans their God. Period. And then they hate their brother. Oh man, he think he got, oh, oh, this is what a Negro say, he think he got, but you're a priest to a European. That's sad. And they do this every time they call on them as white, per se. And 99% of NBC's Negro, Blacks, and Color have absolutely no idea Western Freemason and the so-called Illuminati are the foremost world order deities of Europe. Especially brothers of Africa who blindly serve the order of Western Freemasonry more faithfully than they do themselves. And this bit of trivia is simply to direct the interest to the magnitude of the works of Freemasonry and its impact on their profane world, forcefully isolated outside of the lodges. You got to imagine all the brothers that you may know that's Masonry's and, and they're not spreading the wisdom if it's so powerful. Because it's not. And I'm not here to defend, offend no one or defame any group. 
But we got to come to a, if we, if we got a mission, we got to do it. Cause the only people that's killing us is us. All the hand grips, all the signs, the past rituals, it would be, I'm not going to go all and talk about all that. But the purpose of what the prophet was saying and the, and the gathering, a compilation of this teaching is to exhume our body whole as a people intact as a nation. Just like Yahshua in the scriptures told John, the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free. And the truth has no size. And in any case of raising the dead, being the handiwork of the masterminds, there was always the conquest of the illusionist, that obstacle between doormat life and the certainty of this resurrection. And as for the entity of Freemasonry family and the role it played in the resurrection of the so-called Negro people, if a person needs to get from Wednesday to Friday, you got to go through Thursday, family. And it's not disrespectful to go through Thursday. From his day to his night to reach Friday. That's the necessity of growth and going. And in the course of human events, it's just as natural a fact. Someone put Friday behind Thursday. So when one wants to get to the tomb of the unknown nation family, buried underneath the Constitution of the United States, where the unconscious African rulers lay in state, he or she must go through the secret seal of Freemasonry. And this fraternity, this order, is a secretly sealed stone of opposition that guards the entrance of the dismal crypt. And history occurred during the latter few centuries reveals someone placed these events in this certain order. And today, Freemasonry stands as the major blockage of Negroes, Blacks, and colored people, ordained, attained, of nationhood, under our one free national name, and rejoicing in the nation of the human family. Why you think when I show you all those pictures of no disrespect to European Freemasons, man, even uh, 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 J. Edgar Hoover, man, they had, you see the feds? El Bay, Morocco, Islam. But they tassel is pinned down with the scimitar, with the Asiatic woman on there. Come on, man. And they say they had came in and grew up some dinosaur. And respecting historical events, it was the work of the secret society which committed the murder, buried the victim, and concealed the evidence. And there is not uh, disrespectful to go through the Masonic system to retrieve that which is hidden there. It's an unavoidable necessity. And that's what I'm saying, your brother will sit and lie right to you in your face, but they came to me. They can sit there and play all them games they want to. Just like Stephen Coakley said, <laughs> the Greek is a fraud. It's just what it is. Stolen legacy. And to understand the history of anything, the subject must be placed in proper light, time, and context. And during the past, uh, when the writing was written, it was almost 400 years. It's been hundreds of millions of people on both ends of the whip who have died in awe of the lock on the African slave. We know this. The lock is a secret conspiracy entrusted deep into the lodges of Freemasonry. And in this science, we are gonna illuminate the master key for this special lock. See, it's not just reading, it's an understanding. You got to be that. That's what I'm saying. We have to be this. And when you that, no weapon, no weapon. No weapon, because you operate under law, under a, a, under a covenant. And it's the right key. 
only love divine at the age, the touch of time can turn the key that has been locking a clean and pure nation from the material world that we live in today. And the only people that's going to be offended what I'm saying is these so-called nations above ground. They would not be offended knowing many of those being exhumed will be unnaturally fight the light by defending the darkness of the entombment. So when they talk about that shallow grave of Freemasonry, you never looked at that? And you never looked at that acacia tree? You never looked at the signs and symbols? You never wondered who was buried there? What the European master masons did not want the profound world to know? You didn't want to know? That's why a lot of prophets say we can't even take the cover off of all the secret societies. The real foundation of this Western Freemasonry rests upon an unlawful murder. This murder is a pogrom of the God man in denial, the African king and indigenous African nationals. This capital crime family included the subjugation, there we go again, that word subjugation of African through the dowsing of the light in Egypt and obscurity of the true garden of Eden. And this homicide is disguised in the constitution of Freemasonry as the killing of Haram Abif, the widow's son. You never thought about that? <laughs> it got you all twisted. And the entombment of this saying is unquestionably the master crime of the times. That's the master crime of the time. What my noble say? He said, man, everybody should give a donation. He's man. Yeah, if you, anybody want to give a donation, yeah, you can. Cash out dollar sign KG Bay, but whatever. Haram's death depicts a history from the first physical African man to be enlightened with wisdom to the last mankind, European, to become civilized with knowledge. And back again, and to understand this murder is to free the Negro from his disguised grave of perpetual slavery. What'd you say? Yeah. My noble said everybody jumped on sheet page should give a donation. I don't know who they are. What you say? Yeah, it's Cash App, Dallas Sign, KG Bay. With well, gratitude for writing all those names down for me, Noble. Using the only divine key that will separate this mystery, or they call it a secret, from where it's lodged in Freemasonry. And although Freemasonry is not a religious order, it is predominantly structured from the Bible, the Torah, the Vedas. If you don't know what the Vedas is, you need to be a student. You need to learn. People be putting titles on themselves and know they have no aptitude. And the Holy Quran. And all of these books lay open on the Masonic altar. And if you're a European or a Negro Freemason, you know I'm telling the truth. You might not know or, or, or be initiated in that, in that dispensation, but you probably have seen it. Pit in the height of your degree. And most Negro Masons only 32 and 33 degrees which is in meteorology, that's when fraud, that's when water freeze. That's snowman wisdom. And then them Negroes will have their tassel pinned down and they'll wear their feds in secrecy. You'll never see a Negro Mason in the real world with a feds on. He won't even probably, and then she won't even tell his son. It's all good about the light. I don't care about the light messing up the picture. The message is getting there. I don't care about the light messing up the picture, Noble. I'm right here. No disrespect. No disrespect to you. I understand what you're saying, but I'll be more attuned to the words instead of the light behind me. I can close my eyes and listen. No disrespect. No disrespect. That's what I'll be saying. I don't be knowing who people are. They jump on my page and speak. I don't know who people are. And then when I block people, they get upset at me. No disrespect to you. 
but gratitude. Thank you for letting me know about the light. The parable of Haram Habith can be found in the Torah or the Old Testament. First Kings, the seventh uh, chapter, describe his crime. Because of these covert activities, it will take this whole teaching written in layman terms to explain the magnanimous essence to the need to know. I have to break it down. I have to use the analogy of, of birthing, you know, with a mother of breastfeed. It'll take that long because I have to break it down. And since this murder has not been publicly reported, the true characters will be revealed because there is no innocent to protect. And not only has the murder gone unreported, but also because of the great conspiracy, those who have been most victimized now carry this black mark of death and yet does not uh, realize he is dead. What do you say? No, no disrespect here. Like, man, we should be paying to the attention, not the light gratitude. Thanks for the donations, uh, Noble. Yeah, it's Cash App Dallas Iron KG Bay. I got my nobles in Flint, Michigan on, on my other thing in the temple. And I'm from Flint, Michigan, so I go live with some of my uh, temple buddies in Flint. And so I just have a whole different uh, system that I go Zoom with them. So if you see me talking on another phone, I'm talking. I got three things set up. I got my YouTube, I got my Instagram, and then I got my Zoom with my nobles in uh, Flint, Michigan. So anyway. But the great conspiracy, those who have been most victimized now carry this black mark of death and yet does not realize he or she is dead. Yet both the murder and the death is real. Our prophet Noble Drew Ali, myself, an Egyptian adapt. I don't like to use the word master. I like to use student. Because as I go to a higher level, I blend in with my students. Per se, when people think, oh, they like to walk around with a black belt when I study Wing Chun, I ain't care about no belt. The higher I went, I want to go back to a white belt. So you won't know who the master is or who the master student is. And a black belt really just means you're ready to learn. A lot of times they often mistake an, an our prophet and myself to be some Freemason or some high order of Shriners, but you can't look fine at, you have to be initiated into certain crafts to have an understanding. You just can't pick up no book and, and be act like a book gonna make you something. You be at home all day or you're not initiated and you call yourself a sheik and I say, well, where are your pupils? Or you call yourself a teacher, you got a school or you call a university, well, where are your students? I have adult students and children. However, this chapter of in this wisdom, it will clearly reveal no true God man can be a Muslim who submits his or her will to the will of the great God Allah. That's yourself. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head. If you would have came to Sunday school yesterday, you would have got the science. You're getting ready to delete that off social media. Yesterday was amazing Sunday school. But you can't do that while simultaneously give your will via oath to the worshipful of a man, which you call your worshipful master. In the beginning of Freemasonry, it's a vast difference between Freemasonry and African self-mastery, whose ancient educators were centered in Kemet, or which we like to call modern Egypt. And the European orders of Freemasonry are built upon the letter of universal laws stolen from African grand temples. Everything from the tools, when you get in your Morse Quran, what is it, uh, chapter five, starting at verse 11, these are the tools, signs, all the symbols, as I just was telling you about. What do you say? You say you wrote the name down good. Yeah, I'll block them all. But it's Cash Out Dallas on KG Bay. Oh, damn. I don't even know who this is calling me. I don't answer. What number is this? Oh, no. 
but uh, nah, I'm good. Sorry about that, y'all. I got a lot of things going on today. But signs and symbol and most manifest seen by the carnal eyes were pillaged northward into Europe. At all costs, Western Freemasonry should never be construed as something beneficial to the children of Africa. All lodges of European Freemasonry are built upon science, tools, signs, symbols, laws, rituals, pillaged from the temples, the universities, the lodges, and pyramids of Northeast and Northwest Africa. And contrary to Mason's decree of being free, ancient and accepted, Freemasonry as it is established today, only recently began at the turn of the 18th century. I want to start right there. My note was saying, if I'm feeding anybody, can I get a response? And if you like to teach us, would you like to donate a small contribution to our temple and school? If you do, if you do, it's cash out dollar sign KG Bay. If you don't, it's been, it's been people on here that have been on my page multiple times. And I allow that, but people be in here multiple times and never say nothing or never get literature and then want to tell me about things. And I say, if you like what's going on, is it a problem with giving a small contribution? Because if your girlfriend asks you to come to church, I bet you we get up there and give a donation to the church, to the pastor and probably don't even care what he's talking about and go right and get some chicken afterwards. Or we might go to church with the girl because we like her and want to sleep with her, per se. And I'm just saying, in generalities, I'm not talking about anyone. But I'm saying, if this science is good to you, I don't think it's nothing wrong with giving a small charitable contribution because we're giving it to a church. If we're getting fed, if we've been here multiple times, if we men, if we men, I'm talking about men that have been on my page multiple, multiple, multiple times, continuously, continuously, and never come to class. And our class is on Saturday and Sunday and, and take time out your day through the week. Come on, man. If it means something to you, if it don't, it's all good. Remember, this is my house. And sometimes you might come back and the door will be closed. But I love everybody, man. I just ask people to treat me accordingly. I just ask people to treat me accordingly, man. Because if I'm not teaching something that you that's giving you value, I, I wouldn't be here. I ask everybody at every time. I say, if I'm if I'm not teaching you something of value, I will. I understand that. Then I'm not for you. But if I'm teaching you something for value, and you continue to be here, and you are an adult, and you are an adult, I don't think it's nothing wrong with with our with, with us giving a, a donation to our temple and school, and getting literature, and getting books. I don't I don't see nothing wrong with that. Because if I wouldn't, if if I if I wouldn't illuminating something, you wouldn't be here. And I've been all, going almost for an hour. So that's why I say it's our own people. We'll go give our money willingly to things that don't mean nothing. And then the things that we say mean something, we won't support it. That's what I'll be saying. And to being free and accepted, Freemasonry, as it is established today, only re recently began at the turn of the 18th century. Its first recorded meeting was held on June 24th, 1717 in London, England, in a tavern called the Goose and the Gridiron. Look it up. The social gathering of England's uh, aristocrats, men of wealth and education formulated the Masonic order. You can research this stuff. They were the so-called elites, separated from the uh, have-nots and believed they could make good men better. 
Europeans James Anderson, Reverend John DeGralius, scientist, philosopher, and third grandmaster, centered the founding rituals upon what they knew of the Egyptian adapt religions of Isis and Osiris. When you get a, if if you was a, if you were the student, just like all my students at a college, even uh, my European students, because everyone is student. If you want to be a student, I'm a teacher. Period. And most of our people that look like us don't want to be a student. But one of the books is called uh, Atlantis of Latter Days, one of the old ancient books that's probably is unavailable right now. You can probably check and see, but it's probably unavailable. It's only talking about the Osiris mysteries. Guaranteed. And you have and if you initiate, you have to know all this stuff internally. And what was the mother of all the world religions? The ancient Egyptian mystery system, the perfection of God and man. And it has been rearranged into the three degrees of masonry. And most of the structures, all the buildings, all that, and the constitution were taken from the original man, that God man, mainly so-called Solomon and the building of the temple. Yet the lessons can reach as far back to when the leprous, no disrespect, the so-called pale-skinned people were first cast out of a maxima. That's what they say, the first true divine name of Africa. But I don't get into that. I get into whatever your tongue speak. I'm with it. What you want to call it? Whatever. I'm, hey, man, I, I don't get into the semantics. And two lying into the Caucasus Mountains of Europe to when Moses went to civilize them or in other rituals and forms, Masons will acknowledge other African masters of the same family. Abraham, Boaz, Bayrou, David, Hezekiah, Joachim, Joseph, Yahshua, although they may also draw some of their power from the Buddhists. Their highest acquirement is to find the God they seek, whose Arabic name is Allah. And which I don't say that that ain't even Arabic. So when people say that, I, I, I don't agree that's the Arabic name, but that's a whole nother teaching. The Encyclopedia Britannica describes Freemasonry as the world's largest secret society. When you look up the, that European pseudo stuff, Malcolm C. Duncan's, which the which, what Negro Masons probably have, the Masonic Ritual, and monitor the third edition. And it says it's a fraternal order of, and it says right here, it writes quite candidly. And it says, and I quote, listen, this is the third edition from 1929 to 1966. It is a fraternal order for freeborn white men, sound of limb, not blind, deaf, or crippled, of age 21 or older, binding its initiates to one another and to the institution for life by death oath. It is always good to know the heart of given subject. So let's examine the free, ancient and accepted principles of Freemasonry. I already showed you in the later teaching, they can't be free and accepted because they weren't old enough. I showed you the so-called ancient rite of the mystic noble shrine, that that was modern. And then I showed y'all I was way, almost a, way prior to, I showed y'all uh, to compare and the contrast from our literature and from other literature for who there was the ancient noble rite of the mystic shrine and how the European copy later on already proven. Already proven. So it, it, it's like I said, I can rest my case. That's why I said the European is not the joke of masonry. The Negro is. The European know that he or she is the son of a Muslim. They know this. In Freemasonry, the coffin is showcased as an emblem of mortality. Mortality. Keep that in your hippocampus. The prefix, just like you have a suffix, well, the prefix, mort, M-O-R-T, for my scholars, always relate to death. The word mortality refers to the human death on a massive scale. War, disease, ETC, genocide, 
the West African God man who civilized Spain, Italy, Portugal for over 800 years was the trusted keeper of the ancient mystery systems of the God and man and that infinite wisdom and that infinite wisdom and that infinite wisdom and that infinite wisdom is the true tools which build Solomon's temple. The lodges of Western Freemasonry used a coffin to conceal their murder of this Western African God man. The sprig of the acacia, the acacia, a tree indigenous to the continental Africa. It is the Masonic tombstone now marking the grave of the first man formed in human flesh to indeed be African. I hope y'all rocking with me. An upright five-pointed pentagram denotes Morocco as is intact West African jurisdiction. Morocco was called the capital of the old Moorish empire. And below are four of the coffins used by various orders of Freemasonry. And they all bear the pentagram. Some stars are open and some closed. But all represents man. All coffins have the acacia sprig, but some also boldly display the murder weapon, which is the setting mall, used to render the final blow to Haram Abif. Others show the very shovel of constitutional laws used to bury him in a northwestern shallow grave. Although dead family, he was trained to walk around as a Negro, a black and a colored, but never to realize himself as God. And the fiend existence of Haram would never enable him to rise from the world's most secret massacre, whole intact as one nation bearing one, re bearing one free national name. So when you look at those coffins in Freemasonry, when you look at all that stuff, the Western Masonic coffin, if it could talk, it would say, we are the same. You can see the Moorish Pentagram. Look, let me show y'all something, man. <laughs> People get us caught up with spookies and with all that scary goofy stuff because they're not initiated they want to talk crap about something they have no idea and you can notice the pentagram on these coffins some mark the tombstone with negro black or color others with african americans we are buried here to rest in pieces as property and these marks are truly slave names that were given to us as uh, conquered west african nationals during the lawful times of so-called slavery 1779 to 1865. We bear but one free national name, Moorish Americans, but no one has heard us yet. Soon all coffins will talk, then the earth will tremble from truth, but we rejoice and marvel from the divine life being returned to dry bones, which have been left to dry from perpetual mental death in the noonday sun. So what about a Mason being free? Make no mistake about it, family. The institution of Western, Western Freemasonry is an expression of freedom for certain males with pale skin at age 21, with sound mind and body. With the African God man temporarily entombed for a few centuries, the, uh, uh, the criminals fancied themselves safe to introduce the world's, uh, Europe's version of peace on earth and freedom to all men. So the suffix free, and Freemasonry is of great significance because it established the very status of the order and the intent of its members. Our Prophet Noble Drali, myself, I teach my Moors and my members and my Muftis and my Empresses. Although you were born free, you will come to know that nothing is free until it is of self, clean, pure, and unmixed. Be yourself, Moors, as water offers freedom for fish to swim as air offer freedom for birds to fly like so secrecy offers freedom for masons to work 
and not be detected. When any living thing is free, it is due to natural autonomy, which offers security and glory of their own prosperity. The history of the European race showed that the concept of freedom is acquired through conquest and where survival of the fittest is the superior law. And we know this, it's no slander to nobody. And when so-called Europeans, whatever you want to call it, Trilodites, Albians, whatever you want to call it, when they see other cultures, be they human, beast, fowl, or the sea, living in a natural state of freedom, it is viewed as wild, uncivilized, barbaric, and primitive. Research history. And actually free, part of Freemasonry family come from the medieval stonemasonry guilds. During the brief period of European history, a stonemason who had became a master mason and working for himself was free to travel in the land and practice in their trade without supervision. Therefore, a mason family in this context, having mastered his craft and now uh, uh, acutable or, or accountable or acutable, all others who are bound down to the profane world will call himself free. And when you understand and, and research further and become a student, you will be provided with this understanding. That's why our prophet and myself, we gave all our Moors brothers and sisters the holy instructions to be free. It's holy instruction to be free. We are a new nation of people, a clean and pure nation descended from the inhabitants of Africa, do not desire to amalgamate, to marry, all this stuff. Therefore, we are returning the church and Christianity back to those European nations as it was prepared by their forefathers for their earthly salvation, while we, the Moorish Americans, are returning to this form of Islam, which was founded by our forefathers for our earthly and divine salvation. And there's nothing wrong with that. Read your Moorish Quran, chapter 48, 6 and 8. Read that. The Holy Prophet was teaching a people yet to be realized as a nation and only the subject barrier delays this realization. Most Negro, Black and colored males are denationalized, nationalists. Men woven into property by constitutional laws of a declared people. This is why Freemasonry is forbidden to Negro, Black, colored, African-American men and other slaves. Research it. Always been mysterious to Negroes. They all, it gotta be always some mystery. Always is a mystery and some secret or Negro. Ooh, it's a mystery, it's a secret. Yeah, cause you don't know nothing. No Negro, black, and colored person never known freedom. How can they? Why? Because the Negro other man made uh, the beast. No one has ever searched for an unknown treasure simply for the reason they are no conscious of what the value of, it, of the existence clearly is. All things must confirm to nature. And true freedom is not the psychic nature of a slave not of a Negro, Black, or color. And it's for this reason alone that the Negro, while dressed in the gills as a master mason, will never know the freedom found in the free national name of all other fraternal lodges, all those brothers of the earth except him. And the male Negro, Black, and color will be the very last to discover they have been made more animal yet in the shell of a man. That's why in reality, what is a Negro? That's why we suffer this mental slavery. That fourth principle, which is freedom. Because we never experienced freedom since being subjugated for almost 230 years since this writing was written under that iron handed yoke and laws of certain uh, 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 misnomer understanding. We got to understand this, man. It's no slander to no one. But when they say ancient, I know brothers that's part of Mason Lodges. 
And what's happening will piss them off to the highest pistivity. But what on my green earth is an ancient Negro? Nobody can tell you because it ain't none. A temperate, a typical ancient Negro Mason of the mystic order of American Lodge in today's United States of America. All ancient Negro black and colored Masons, and you can throw them out the nearest modern sub basement window. All Negroes, all Negroes have been made in the colonial USA, which is less than 250 years old when this writing was written. The African origin of the word ancient begins about 10,000 BC and worked its way backwards beyond Lemura before the great earthquake. This brings to surface a reasonable question. Since all Negro blacks and color are made in the United States, then how ancient can a Negro Mason truly be? Ask yourself that question. A common grade school student, if taught the truth, would know black people cannot be a lawful day older than the history of the United States. Think about it. Think about it. But as for Mason using the word ancient, it is nearly always implies to their European roots in the Egyptian flower pots of Africa. Europeans themselves has not been civilized long enough to have an ancient history. It's no disrespect. At best, they can only trace their history to about 1500 BC. And anything they claim knowledge of prior to that date is purely prehistory. Media orchestrated guesswork with a heavy accent on uh, uh, fabricating. And most Europeans will not acknowledge their true origin. So they place the beginning of their life in the obscurity of uh, primate parents and dark ages. But we never had a dark age. The true essence of ancient times is the first consciousness of the harmony family of universal law established by the torchbearers of civilization being issued for the government of man on earth. These laws created with the original man were passed on with sacred care. Come on, man. And actually the only thing a master Mason knows and don't tell is who is buried in our shallow grave and the true free identity of the so-called Negro, black and colored people. And whoever coined this statement has obviously admitted Muslims completely because on their feds, they say Muslim. They are the ones who are, the, who are forbidden to argue, but know and will tell the truth. This coined earthbound remark does not apply to Emmanuel, God and man, men of God, who still know today what Masons know not. Masonry's base is most symbolic and speculative. It uses symbols and tools of the laboring man as gestures, signs, and forms, not the laborer per se, per se. There were no operative Masons in the order. It was compiled of mostly England's social finest gentlemen. Research this. Even accept it after being accepted. Again, one must see through the dual meanings of a Masonic word. Mason used words like profane world when describing all non-Masons, with no exception, wives, mothers, religions, associations, ETC, courts, laws, ethic, uh, persuasion, and Yahshua, ETC. And all of those make up profane world of Freemasonry. The word profane derived from the Latin word profanus, meaning one, outside the outside world, excluded from, the temple, unclean, polluted, unholy, completely unacceptable. And notice how exact profanus describes the entire constitutional man-made design of the so-called Negro. And according to all Masonic pillars family, everything and everybody in the world is profane, which has not been sworn and made Masonic. Research it. This leads to one master question, where on earth amongst all the nations of human family has there ever been the Negro, black and color ever been accepted? I wait. As I close, man, cause I can go on. 
It was the time there lived this king who was the greatest desire was to build a temple for the sole purpose of serving his creator. The king's name was Solomon and he was the wisest master builder dedicated to uh, following the temple's blueprint design by the grand architect. So-called King Solomon summoned the most accomplished craftsmen in civilized world, India, Persia, China. The call was for masters of the order of Melchizedek from the sacred school of the Nazarites. The Nazarites, an African brother named Haram Abif, who was also a master of building tools, also answered this Nazarite call. There was one Haram from the kingdom of Tyree, the capital of which was Sidon. It's in your Bible, Sidon, in the village of Zephrath, where he lived with his mother. One Haram specialties was constructing pillars. You know what pillars are, don't you? Yeah, thanks for the donation, Noble. I got like three things up. I'll be back. I'll be in Vegas on the 10th for Indigenous People Day. Yeah. My bad, y'all. But the purpose of a pillar is to support that which is above with that which is below. Haram's headdress, called the Fez, depicted the mastery of his craft. First Kings, the seventh chapter. The other biblical Haram is from Ty, T-Y-E. Haram Abif became the master builder of King Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. And one day Haram, with his tools, was on his assigned route. The three roofings, I like to call them Larry, Curly, and Moe, but I'm going to keep it biblical so, I can, so you can understand this story. The three robbers named Jubilo, Jabel, and Jablim. Research this. It's in your Bible. Stole Haram's tools and clothes. The three assailants were from the sun cursed, not the sun kissed, the sun cursed tribes and were after the seekers of King Solomon's temple and were besides themselves for not being invited to the building of the Grand Temple. Haram Abif stood naked before them, and after they saw him, he did not have the key to Solomon's temple, and the thieves knocked him in the head with the setting maul, killing him at noon. And to hide the crimes, the murderers buried Haram in a shallow grave, right? In the northern portion of the kingdom, right? And concealed the grave with an evergreen planet on the top of it, right? A search party went out for him. Remember that? This is the Mason. They ain't gonna tell you this. It came in need for their master builder. And when the and when the three Jews were questioned whether they had seen Haram on a straight way, each denied any knowledge of him. But they were beheaded. They continued their search in the south, the east, the west. But his body was finally found in the north after four long days, aka four hundred years. All the king's men could not lift the son of a widow, from the uh, grave intact. Only the king would know the grip to raise Haram Abif from the grave. And so it came to pass in 1913 AD, our prophet Noble Jirali returned the ancient Egyptian mystery teachings to the fallen sons and daughters of North America. And that's what we teach in this science. All Freemasons vowed by a series of so-called death oaths to be brutally mutilated, mu excuse me, mutilated prior to the death before he or she dare reveal the truth about Haram, the widow's son. And then you got Morris and that, that Freeman talking about they some widow's son. <laughs> We're going to clear that up. And then we done. And everybody thankful for the donations. Yep, it's Cash App, Dollar Sign, KG Bay. Gratitude. The vow of secrecy are behind every major and minor setback of so-called racism and Jim Crowism, racial profiling, judicial abuse, ETC, all that. These so-called oaths are a series of open chemical warfare and should not be taken lightly by anyone. That's why the true story of Aram Abif 
the so-called widow son, is the reenactment, the reenactment of the entombing of the African family, hereby called Moors, for ancestral and legal purposes. This is the world's greatest secret kept from the human family since Yahshua was kept in India and Egypt for 18 years. That's what your Moors Quran is, is the 18 missing years of, of who? Jesus' life? The silent brotherhood of the East just break things down in layman terms. And it's more than that. The same African God man can be seen today as he lay in a state under the word person in the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. And every president must swear under oath to keep the murder hidden and the body of the new African nation buried. So help me God. We almost there. Religion plus slavery equals Freemasonry. You got to remember from 1460, 1492, 1555, 1619, enslavement of the Moors was a religious issue, right? It was supported by the Jews with the Torah, enforced by the Muslims with the Quran, and all entities under the cross from the Roman Catholic Pope's Vatican to Christian churches of Europe. King James I solicited the literacy expertise of Shakespeare, so his version of the Bible would endorse slavery as an act ordained by God. As for the business ends of these three great religions, the Muslims supply Africans for the slave trade, the Jews tax their interest earned on their investment, ships and shackles, franchises, and Christians use the chattel for free labor and main uh, producers for raw and finished products, which prophets went back to the church, the synagogues, and the, and the mosques. That's why most of the eunuchs back then, they cut their, you know, their prizes off. This marked the beginning of today's economical development on a global scale. From 1619 to 1774, the inhumane barbaric genocide of the African Moors reached an unprecedented proportion. So we got to understand this. Then you get into that so-called chattel slavery. So let's get into this so-called widow son, man. When, when, when our brothers, and, and I say, forgive my brothers for they don't know, and if they still act like they don't know, those are the ones that's lying to you. Because nobody has the power over a God when you operate under the law and divine, because the divine comes first. The widow's son, let's deal with it. The widow's son is a myth made from the minds of Western Freemasonry and cloaked in secrecy. As most lies originated from some degree of truth, or as most jokes are founded upon realities in life, like so nearly all of the European Masonic rituals, signs, tools, and symbols are diluted reflections of African originations. The so-called widow son is no exception to these fundamental human principles. Yep, thanks for the donation, yep. We said, when I'm coming back to Flint, I told you after I come from uh, Vegas, uh, bro, I got a whole nother system set up. I got three systems set up. <laughs> but in European masonry, the widow's son is descriptive of the Western African God man whose code name is Haram Abif. Stay with me. Haram Abif, the widow's son, generally code names are used by secret societies, governments, military, intelligence, and other worldly thinkers to conceal true identities. In the writer world, we call them pen names or pseudiums. Identities of operations and agents, code names are num diplomes, trickle down to the hoi polloi and used as nicknames, alias, AKA, and so-called stage names. No matter the social level family, deceptive or false identifications are used to hide the correct and proper person, place, or theme. Stay with me. Haram Mabith, the widow son, originated from the same European minds which created the name Negro, Black, and Color. The three-fifth clause, the blue eye Yahshua, the trust in the legal tender of man-made gods, formed from the bust of past presidents, and of course, America's first sheeted terrorists, which we know which they are. And the Klan ain't even original. The old outfits come from the Black priests in Spain. I'll show you in J.A. Rogers' books at another time. They got whole statues of them. Other Masonic offerings include the fake Santa Claus, the Humpty Dumpty, all that. And the average John Doe citizen would probably croak if they knew all the things 
that was going on that kept you in a shallow grave. The life of any widow begins with the death of her husband. Keep this in your mind. Stay in context. And she has not remarried. A widow is a respected but unprotected woman. An unprotected woman is a first alert, denoting what? The fall of a nation. When I show you the atrocities of the single mind, when we do that in the DAP class this Sunday, it's going to be amazing. But symbolically, the widow is a cold word, descriptive of a nation, an adversary who cannot defend itself or, pro or prosper because its government and power has become substandard. Most churches and secret societies collect donations called what? The widow's might to help the women who have been widowed. The laws of a marriage bond has raised her from female to woman to support the high station of wife. From there, she was uh, raised to motherhood because she alone can create a God in nine months without the sound of a hammer or a nail. Allegedly family, Haram Abif, the widow son, prosperity has now began compromise with the death of his father. And secretly family, her son's code name is Haram Abif, but publicly his shallow grave has been clearly marked and accepted as the misnomer Negro, black and colored people. Now the student can imagine that the widow as Africa, a Mexima, whatever you want to call it, and her son, the God man of the Nile, that you can clearly see why the furthest thing from this so-called Willie Lynch fake stuff. You can see that a European Mason's mind is the possibility of Haram Abif being raised from his constitutional shallow grave, whole and intact, as one nation bearing one free national name. It's no such thing as a perfect or unpunished crime. And this holds especially true for the great crime of denationalization, slavery, and global cover-up. I'm telling you. So, nobles, as I close, there can be no widow while Allah is the husband man. What our prophet teach us, what I teach us more about the widow son, the first thing our prophet teach, the first thing that I teach us more is, is actually the very last thing that a mason earns the privilege to know. Who made you? Allah, the great God. Man is a thought of Allah. All thoughts of Allah are infinite. They are not measured up by time. Man himself is not the body nor the soul. He is the spirit, a part of Allah. So spirit man and seed of Allah held deep within himself the attributes of every part of Allah. Now seeds are perfect, as perfect as the source from which they come, but they are not unfolded into life made manifest. The child is as perfect as the mother is. So man, the seed must be deeply planted in a soil that he might grow, unfold, and does not bud. Unfold to show the flower, the human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah was full ordained to be the Lord of the plane, the soul, and the plane of things made manifest. So Allah, the husbandman of everything that is, threw forth this human seed in the soil of soul. It grew apace and man became a living soul and he became the Lord of all the kingdoms of the soul. So the science in this lesson to Moore's children is there can be no widow because Allah, the great God of the universe, is the husband man, the soil of soul, with her actions of thinking, willing, reasoning, understanding, and remembrance, is the mother within which Allah planted his spirit in man. The word man means thinker. Man rises by the elevated degrees of what he thinks. We talk about that illumination. His ladder of salvation has three steps. Belief, faith, fruition. It's in your Morris Quran, chapter 7, 25, 31. The more rapid his or her thoughts, the more like unto himself. As God, he or she becomes. Our thoughts must be developed by the exercise of strength. And man cannot die. The spirit man is one with Allah and live and, and, and lives in man. And live men cannot die. 
And while the West African slave trade will forever be a historical fact, we say, the untold truth is the inhabitants of the African continent have never been without the omnipresence of the great universal creator. So what I'm trying to say, family, as long as Allah lives, man, nor the mother that nourished him can never die. The African continent has always been the mother of human family. All nations are her daughters, especially buried in the West. You know, especially those from her northern and southern shores who kind of mankind not in the head of wisdom and buried in the West. These guys manifest in Africa, became known in the West as the rejected cornerstone. The rejected cornerstone. Because the nickel black and color is the most redundant of all people. Does not interpret into they have been orphaned or their God man has been widowed. No, not as long as he is in a spirit and a part of the divine order. Understand this, man. Jabel, Jablum, and Jublim. The names of that. The identities of the assassins of Haram Abif. Come on, man. So I want us to understand we can't be afraid of our science, man. I can go on and on, but I want to stop right there. I got a lot to do today. Phones, calls to make, and I got to get to my schedule. But I thank everybody for the donations, man. I challenge y'all to come to class and learn. Check out our Temple and School webpage, bbtsciencetemple.com. Check out our uh, other company, morrishaberdatcher.com, where you can get all your Morris American regalia and much, much more. And check out our other company, is mypdfbooks.com. That's my PDF books. That's books with a Z. And remember, all books are PDF. The reason why we like all our books to be PDF, because we, we sell them for a fraction of the price that you would buy hard copy from, from any other platform. And then if you buy expensive books and you lose them, what you're going to go buy? Some more expensive paper? People make this stuff act like it's super expensive. And I say we created something for our brothers and sisters can get the wisdom for a fraction of the price. And you can go to Office Max and Staples and they'll print the book. They'll go to Office Max and Staples, they'll print the book and you will have a book forever. If you ever lose it, you will have it in your file and you could just print it again. But thank you all, man. I love you all, man. Peace, light and illumination. Thank you all for staying here, man, and listening to me for this almost an hour and a half. Those that have been following me for a long time, I wish you guys seek out because with no disrespect, I love everyone, but I will be blocking people that just follow. And, you know, if it don't mean nothing to you, I understand. It's other people to follow, and I understand that. But we are a temple and a school, and I use this just to cast my net out, to bring you privately, to come to our scheduled classes for you can hear Sunday school, for you can see adapt class. For you can see business, for you can see what we're really doing in real life. And we're getting ready to have our third annual Morris Ball in Arizona. I mean, I welcome everyone. So I don't see what's wrong with donating a small couple dollars to donate to something that we love and get literature. Every time you come to Sunday school in a dad class, I give literature for donations. I did a whole book preview last week where I, where I uh, had $1,600 book, $100 worth of books that Morris could have got for $150. And you telling me all oh, 43 European students that I lectured on a college campus put their money together and get all books and no Morris get the books. And then two weeks later, Morris hit me up. Hey, hey, Sheik. Hey, man, I was on your page uh, two weeks ago. Do you still got that deal? And these be the same people that was on my page when I was doing the book deal live. And I said, brother, if it's seven of y'all, all y'all got to do is put $30 together. Five of y'all put $30 together. That's $150. Oh, damn, we weren't even thinking. Well, you, that's what happens when you don't think. And then you go to Amazon and buy this for $230. And then people be laughing at you like, and they be like, well, man, I got mine for sheep for $75. Went to Office Max and Staples and printed just like I said. Then they be like, man, matter of fact, I went and got this, 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 because on Amazon it costs 
this much, two, three, four hundred. I went and got it from him and went and printed it. I have no problem with college students and other people. That's not Moore's. So like I said, man, I love y'all. Peace, light, and illumination.